Aren't you glad for Calvary today and what Jesus did for us there? Never lose its power. Amen. So we thank God for that today. I want to read a passage from 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 3 through 12. Today I want you to stick with me for a little bit. I promise you I'll get to the end. It'll be encouraging. But i got to tell you some things up front that you need to know. And I think they're helpful for you. So I'm going to give you a warning today. But then we're going to talk about the good news. How many are you ready for some good news? Amen? Amen? Let's go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. Here's what the Bible says. Don't let anyone deceive you in any way. For that day, what day is he talking about? The day of the Lord, coming of Jesus. That day will not come until the rebellion occurs. King James says, falling away. And the man of lawlessness is revealed. The man doomed to destruction. Who are we talking about there? Talking about the Antichrist. He will oppose and exalt himself over everything that is called God or is worshipped so that he sets himself up in God's temple proclaiming himself to be God. Don't you remember? Paul says that when I was with you, I used to tell you these things and now you know what is holding him back so that, you, so that he may be revealed at the proper time. For the secret power of lawlessness is already at work. But the one who now holds it back will continue to do so until he's taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed whom the Lord Jesus will overthrow with the breath of his mouth and destroy by the splendor of his coming. Now the coming of the lawless one will be in accordance with the work of Satan displayed and all kinds of counterfeit miracles, signs, and wonders. And in every sort of evil that deceives those who are perishing. They perish because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. For this reason, God sends them a powerful delusion. King James says strong delusion. So that they will believe the lie so that all will be condemned who have not believed the truth but have delighted in wickedness. The next three verses, I did not put them on the screen, but I just wanted to let you know that the theme of that next, the next three verses, and we'll talk about it today, is to stand firm. Stand firm. Stand firm. And so today we're going to talk about deception but we're going to talk about how we can overcome the great deception and the deception that's at work now in the earth. And that's very important for us today. A lot of people are going to be deceived as we approach the coming of the Lord. So I'm going to tell you how you can stand firm and be on guard. And God loves you because we've got a future. How many know we've got a future today? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for this word. We ask that you would minister to hearts and lives today. In Jesus' mighty name, and everybody that loved Jesus said together, Amen. And you may be seated in the presence of Jesus today. Heard a story about a, a man who was out of a job, and he wondered what he would do to make ends meet. Hard to find a job. And so he went to the zoo just to walk around, to pass some time away. And he noticed a sign that said, Help Wanted. So he went to the zookeeper and said, I'll be glad to do anything. I just need a job. And he said, Well, I, I just got to tell you, uh, I've got a job for you. It might be a different type of job for you. But if you want it, you can have it. He said, our gorilla died, and if you'll wear this gorilla suit and get in that cage, we'll pay you rather well. 
And the man said, I can do it. So he got in the cage, and man, he was a great gorilla. There was a swing in that, in that cage. And he became really uh, uh, more than adequate at swinging on that swing. And he, he became so uh, uh, well-adjusted that one day he was swinging in that swing, and he swung over the top of his cage, swung over the top of his cage, and landed in the next cage, which was the lion's cage. <clears throat> and so as he faced the lion, he said, what am I going to do now? So he began to yell, help, help. And the lion charged him and said, be quiet, buddy. You're going to get, a both, get us both fired. If you... <laughs> so the whole zoo was pretty much a place where people were deceived. How many of you have ever been deceived? Sometimes you, and this day and time, people are skilled at the art of deception. It's happened to me. Not too long ago, I, I got something from a reputable firm, reputable organization. They said, you've qualified for some AirPods. And I thought, man, this is great. And the picture came and it looked just like those Apple AirPods. And it said, all you need to do is pay 29 bucks. And, you know, I thought to myself, this can't be true. I knew I shouldn't have done it, but somehow I did it anyway. Came in the mail. And it was nice, had a little nice package. It was a rechargeable case, and I put the pods in. One side didn't work, and the other one sounded like an AM radio. And after looking back and seeing some of the fine print, I realized that you had to send them back if they didn't work. And so little did they tell me that I had to pay the postage to send it back. And then they charged on my card a restocking fee of $20. So they made out pretty well with that deal. Some of you are saying, man, Pastor sure is gullible to do that. We've all been deceived in some way, shape, form, or fashion. Today we're going to talk about deception. We're going to talk about spiritual deception and how the enemy has a plan to deceive the entire world. We live in days of deception 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1 says that the Spirit clearly, clearly says that, in, that, that some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things that are taught by demons. 2 Timothy chapter 4 verses 3 and 4, For the time will come when men will not endure sound doctrine, that word sound, is from the Greek word hugiano, which actually means something that is wholesome and healthy, and the people will not partake in their spirit that which is wholesome and healthy. Just as today, uh, some of you will have a healthy lunch, uh, and some of you will not have a healthy lunch. But when we take in healthy food, it helps our bodies. And the same was with our spirit. But it says there is a day, and I believe that day is now, where people are not taking in the wholesome and pure Word of God. And so after this, the Bible says that they will, come, they will produce among themselves teachers after their own lust. It actually means that they will pile up these teachers that tell them exactly what they want to hear it makes them feel good, but it doesn't teach them the truth. And the Bible says that they will hear this and they will be turned from the truth and be turned unto fables. Second Timothy chapter 4, verses 3 and 4. But Paul says in chapter 2 and verse 3, the first part of that verse, he says, don't let anyone deceive you in any way. And he is trying to, to speak to the church because there seems to be some deception here. Throughout history, there have been individuals who have been able to deceive individuals, groups of people, and the masses. Many of you remember in the late 70s, around early 80s, Jim Jones took a group of people, over 800 individuals, to Guyana. And on his command... 
They drank Kool-Aid laced with cyanide, and they all died. And a few years, uh, not too long ago, there was a, a cult called Heaven's Gate, and there were a group of people who died together because they thought that they were going to somehow receive some uh, great revelation or there was going to be someone who was going to receive them. Many of you remember in the 70s, there, there were, I remember when I was in school, and there was uh, some kind of word that was given that Jesus was going to come on a certain fall day. Many of you remember that? And, and uh, some of the students were talking about it. And, and as a result of that, there were people, you know, in the 80s, there were individuals who wrote books, 88 Reasons Why Jesus is Going to Come, 89 Reasons Why Jesus is Going to Come. And, and they said it's going to happen in 88 and 89, and I have seen charts and I've seen all types of things. This person's the Antichrist. This person's the Antichrist. And so I want you to understand that sometimes Jesus, well, sometimes people are just very gullible. And you may say, well, Pastor, that would never happen to me. Maybe not. But Jesus warns of false teachings and prophets in the last days, and he reminds us that there will be wolves in sheep's clothing. And the reason that Paul is having to talk to the people at, in Thessalonica is because they were influenced by false prophets. And there were a group of people who said, you know what? Jesus has already come. There's really no hope. Jesus has already come. And Paul had to, ta to teach them that what had happened or what they had been told was not true. And so Paul went into a teaching to let them know what would happen prior to the coming of the Lord. Now we live in a world today who do, they do not believe that there will be a divine intervention and that Jesus will come again. I'm going to tell you today, just like I told you last Sunday or two weeks ago, Jesus will come again. He's coming again. But prior to that coming, there are things that are going to happen in the earth, in the heavens, among your peers, that the enemy will use to try to deceive you. And so Paul is speaking to the church and letting them know what's going to happen as a result of the coming of the Lord and what will happen prior to that time. And so he says deception is one of those things that will happen. And when the Bible says, let no man deceive you, the Lord is speaking to his church. Because I believe that there are a lot of people today who are following individuals, but they're not into the Word of God. And so therefore, you've got to make sure it's the Word, the Word, the Word. Let me say it again. It's the Word of God, the Word of God, the Word of God, not the Word of man. And if you get a Word of man, it better confirm what God says in His Word. And so it's very important for us to understand. And one of the things that the enemy is using now is deception. He's always used that. From the very beginning. Listen, do you think Satan has new tricks? It's the same old stuff, but it's repackaged. When Adam and Eve were in the garden, and they were told not to eat of the tree the knowledge of good and evil, and they said, we... we even the question that the enemy asked them was a deceptive question. But basically what it comes down to is this. The enemy lied to them and said, you eat of that tree, you won't die. I want you to understand that same lie is being told today, and this is it. That there are no consequences to your disobedience. There are no consequences to sin. And the enemy preaches that lie. He tries to let people know they can do whatever they want. Listen, you know what we were put here for? We were put here to glorify God. And in glorifying God, there's peace, there's joy, there's life. But the enemy deceives and says, you can do whatever you want. And they, and they did die. They died spiritually. And they died physically in the sense that they would die a slow death. 
And so the enemy says there's no consequences for sin. There are those who would preach a different type of gospel today. A gospel that is without a cross. A gospel without sacrifice. A gospel without commitment. A gospel that is just basically just speaking out that I'm a believer. I want you to know that Jesus came to change our lives today. And so therefore, there's so much deception that's going around. In fact, sin by its nature is deceitful. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 22 says that we are to put off, put away the old self which is corrupted by what kind of desires? Deceitful desires, says Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 22. Some of these passages of Scripture, you want to look at them later. And, and the, the, the thing that I've seen is that when I was younger, and especially in the world today, if there is this deceitful desire that the enemy, we have desires, but the enemy adds deceit to them, and he says, if I can just have this, if I can just obtain that, if I can just achieve this level, if I can drive that Maserati, or if I can just drive a Honda, whatever it might be, the enemy tries to tell you that by getting things, achieving status, and having these things in your life, you will finally be happy. Am I talking to the right group today? Some of you have heard that. And some people, if I can just get into this group, if I can just get into this club, if I can just get in that frat or sorority, if I can just somehow have this letter behind my name. Listen, there's nothing wrong with achieving and doing well. God wants us to do well. But if you're doing that for self-satisfaction, I'm going to tell you, you're going to be miserable. And so therefore, it's important for us to realize that deception is at work and the enemy tries to use our desires. If I can just have miss. Miss Hot looking good, then my life will be better. My marriage is not all that good. She talks to me and walks with me and tells me that I am her own. You better let Jesus walk and talk with you and let Him tell you that you're your. He understands me. My husband doesn't talk to me, goes out one ear goes in one ear and out the other. Or you live a fantasy life. I'm preaching today. Or you live a fantasy life and you, you live an alternate type of, of life in your mind. And this is what the enemy wants. He wants deception. And he wants to take you from the truth. We all, all have desires. But here's one what you understand today. When you learn what is good and what pleases Jesus, His is what truly brings you joy. But, and when you obey the Lord, you can lay down at night, you can sleep at night. Let me tell you something, that's maturity. And if God is dealing with you today about stuff in your life, you may think, well, I'm miserable, right? And listen, let me tell you something. If you will yield to Jesus, give it to Jesus, you'll find some peace. And God wants you to have peace. God wants you to have peace. So God is saying, deal with the deception. These are the days of deception. Just as the early church dealt with it, we're going to deal with it. In fact, as we approach the coming of the Lord and the time of the Antichrist, we're going to see deception in greater measure. In fact, Number two, deception and deceiving spirits will become worse as we approach the time of the Antichrist. Can you trust what you hear now? Can you believe everything that you hear now? Where is truth? People have redefined truth as whatever is true for you. They have taken an axe and cut at the tree of truth. 
that is the truth. There are some things that are true regardless of what you think. And so I want us to understand today that truth is being attacked. The truth of God's Word will be be attacked. And so if the coming of the Lord is near, and I want to say specifically, if the coming of the Antichrist is close, then there is going to be more and more deception because the Antichrist, his role will be to deceive the entire planet. And so therefore, it's important for us to understand that these things will increase. Even now, we say, how can people believe and follow these things? I'm not here to be political, but I'm just here to tell you today, and I have to preach these things. I never thought that I would have to preach these things in church. And many of you know these things and I know they, uh, we live in a day that I, I've often thought that if I, I preach, church, preach the truth, that they might take us off of Facebook or take us off of the Internet. And you know what? That's okay. But I want to tell you, God created them male and female. Male and female. And you might identify as a man and you're a woman. But I want to tell you something. This is where the church comes in. Some people say, well, pastor, isn't that being insensitive? No, it makes my heart more sensitive to pray for those people. Okay? So I want to tell you something. You can get on your soapbox and beat it all you want, but you're better served by getting on your knees and praying for the spirit of truth to move in the earth and that a mighty revival would, bring, would come about because of God's blessing. I'll take that as an amen. I was made aware this week that even in certain churches where they feel that it is their role to somehow condition their people to accept the new things that are happening in our society and in our culture. In one particular church, I'll not name the denomination because I want to tell you, just you cannot paint with a brown brush. Everybody that's in a certain denomination, there are people in every movement who love Jesus. But there are some who are actually, there are some, they have what is a children's service. And in some churches they do this. And maybe they don't have a children's church or whatever. But they have a, a person, they actually have a transgender, it's a man, but he's dressed up like a woman. And they've given her name. Pastor, why are you talking about this? Because I think it's important for us to understand how the enemy is trying to come into the church. And they've named her Miss Penny Cost. And she has a different spirit. And so they're teaching the children, even at a young age, to accept the things that we say in the Word of God are true. So I want to share with you today, did you say, Pastor, I could never fall for those things. But I also want you to understand that there are some things floating out there. I've seen it. I've seen it happen time and time again. And sometimes God's people are gullible, and they're gullible because they're not in the Word of God. So I want to tell you, deception is going to increase. In fact, The Bible says it's going to get worse before the Antichrist will come. Verse 7, the first part of that verse says that it is the secret power of lawlessness already at work. I want to talk about the Antichrist just for a few moments. I don't like to bring glory to 
anything that the enemy is trying to do. But I'm sharing this with you today because sometimes in our churches, we don't preach about the end times. We don't preach about the Antichrist. We, there, listen, God's got a plan for the culmination of all things. And we live in a world where people think that man somehow is going to figure this out. But I want to tell you something. Man's lost today. And I want you to understand that God wants us to see. He's got a plan for His people, a plan for His church, and it's a good plan. How many know God's got a good plan today? Amen? He does. But I want to share with you just for a few moments. The Bible says that that day will not come. Coming of Jesus will not happen until the Bible says there's a rebellion or the great falling away. That means that there will be millions of people who will turn away from Christ. Well, pastor, I'm Calvinist, and I don't understand how that's going to happen. I don't care if you're Calvinist or Arminian. I believe what the Word says, and there are many who will turn away from Christ. A rebellion against truth and godlessness will be rampant. There will be hate for the truth. There will be hate for those who follow after the truth. There are even now those in other countries who are losing their lives for the sake of the gospel, and I I want you to know that hell rejoices at that, and I believe that it will be difficult even in the United States and in the Western world more as we approach the coming of Jesus because the Antichrist is the man of lawlessness. He is the embodiment of sin. And before he comes, and if he's coming, don't you think as a part of reasoning and because of the Word of God, it says that secret power of lawlessness is already at work. And so we must understand he will oppose everything that's good, that which is of Christ, and he will uh, oppose the things. He will, he will reach out for the, the social structures of, of, of thousands of years and destroy them. Already, marriage has been redefined. Uh-oh, pastor, you're getting on something and, and you better not go there. Listen, I want you to understand here today, there may be some of you and you're bound. Hear me, I love you, but if you're bound by homosexuality, I want you to understand that God can set you free. God loves you. I'm not here to condemn you. And you're welcome at Glad Tidings Church. I want to tell you that right now. But I've got to tell you that whom the Son of God makes free, you can be free indeed. Your happiness is not with another man, not with another woman. Your joy is in the glory of God being manifest in your life. But people are going to follow Him. Why? When He comes Bible says that there is going to be manifestations of false miracles. This Antichrist, he'll have the answer to all of the issues of the earth. A lot of people say that there are problems here today that no one can really handle. Well, when he first comes on the scene, he will have the answer. And the Bible tells us that he will come and many will be deceived as a result of all that he will do. There will be false miracles. I believe that he will solve world hunger. He will have make sure that medical care and all of these types of things and all, you know, all of these things. He, he will make sure that uh, he will be a man who will sweep people off of their feet. And their strong delusion. And this is why he will be received. Because all of the things that he offers somehow speak to the people of planet earth. He will promise a utopian state and people will follow him. He will appeal to all of the people groups. And that will happen when he comes. And I want to tell you prior to that day, deception will become worse. And I want to tell you something. It's not full force yet. 
But when the Antichrist comes, 2 Thessalonians chapter 7, chapter 2, verse 7, the Bible says, at the present time, he is being restrained. Now the question is, what is restraining the Antichrist? Well, I want to tell you that there's only one thing that can restrain the power of evil. And it's the power of God through the power of the Holy Spirit working through the people of God. So I believe that there will be somehow the church will be removed in some way, shape, form, or fashion. Or there will be a a great persecution of the church. For years I have believed that there would be some type of the church being taken out. Pastor, do you believe that can happen? I believe it can. But I want you to know that before that day, the Bible says the restrainer will be removed. There won't be the prayers of the people that were there earlier. Churches will be closed. You say, Pastor, churches will be closed. Churches are closing right now. And I want to tell you something. It's important for us to realize the power we have as God's people. You may not think that the enemy is somehow intimidated by your prayer, but I want to tell you something. When you call on the name of the Lord, hell shakes. The secret power of lawlessness will be revealed. Unbridled lust, unbridled hate, violence, pride, and then he will announce his true intentions. But get this, this deceptive and lawless spirit is already at work. Now here's my question. How does this deception take place? The answer is very simple. Deception occurs when God's truth is rejected. Paul said here in 2 Thessalonians, he says in verse 10b, they perish because they reject the truth. They reject the truth of the Word of God. Romans chapter 1, verses 21 and 22. They knew God but did not what? Honor Him or give thanks to Him. And they became futile in their thinking. Their foolish hearts were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they become fools. How many of you believe that that describes the front pages of our newspaper even today? So I want you to understand that deception is already at work. And we know that it's important for us That when we get a word that Paul is preaching to the church, he's saying that you've got to heed this word. When the word is given, and when a pastor or the Holy Spirit speaks to you about a specific thing that you need to do in your own personal life, it's very dangerous to put that aside. It's dangerous to reject the wooing of the Holy Spirit because The Lord wants you to know He loves you. So if He's dealing with you today, I just want to say, first of all, know that you are loved by God. And secondly, He loves you because He wants you to be clean, He wants to deal with you, and He wants to minister to you. So beware of the days of strong delusion. Verses 11 and 12. If you think deception's at work now, it's only a spark compared to the blaze that's coming. Jeremiah talked about the people even in his day that did not receive the Word of God. And the Bible even refers to a person who may be drunken. And they are drunken and they are drunk with the wrath of God and they stagger and they go mad. Chapter 25, verse 27, you will be drunken sick and fail to rise no more. How many of you realize that you, how many of you have ever tried to reason with a person who's intoxicated? How many of you ever had success? There's a few of you. Come up here and, and help me. Help the rest of us. 
there is an intoxication of deception being released in the earth today. And, as a res- and the reason that it is, is because people have rejected the truth of God. Think about how things have changed in the last 50 years. When I was a boy, they put the Ten Commandments on the back of a sales card for House Chevrolet. Our teacher had a yardstick, and on the back of it was Scripture. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. I don't know why I was on the yardstick. I was talking to my father yesterday. Usually on a Saturday afternoon when I was growing up, there was some type of music or gospel presentation, Sunday morning, the same thing. During the week, Billy Graham crusades would come on television. Uh, there, were, there were things that were happening. And you say, well, Pastor, we're doing those things. That I'm talking about on prime time. I remember I just didn't like it because Billy Graham would come on and he'd have a crusade somewhere and he would have a, a, a service somewhere and, and, and I didn't like it because it interrupted gun smoke. But I want you to see how even, even people who are not believers were influenced somehow by the truth of God's Word. There was something there. There was some kind of, of a fiber in society lost that and there's a generation now and they're being hear me brainwashed by our society and people who are in other areas of arenas of of influence in the world and it is designed by the enemy to take the truth of God out of it Kelly Durant says, even today, you're being fed strong delusion. Truth and godliness is being diminished in government, schools, colleges, company, media, and most importantly, the homes of men and women. Strong delusion makes one go further and further, or farther and farther into sin. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 8 talks about being darkened in our understanding. Everything that is happening is to sway the masses from truth. A person disconnected from God will accept anything. Anything? Yes. Because there is no basis of truth to weigh it by. Pastor Tim, this is a negative message today. We want you to encourage us. You're warning us. Let me tell you something. I want to protect you and your families. And I want you to live for Jesus. And I want to say today, if you're on the fence and you're happy just where, where you are, I want to tell you, you've got to get off the fence and you've got to give Jesus everything today. We're living in these days where people are being swayed. And a lot of people, and here's what the enemy would have you think. I talk to so many people and they think that if they give their lives to Jesus, They're going to be miserable. They're just going to be in turmoil. Let me tell you something. You're miserable and in turmoil without Jesus today. And God says, I've come to give you life, and I'm coming to give you life more abundantly. I've staked my very being on Jesus Christ. (laughs) I have staked my life, my reputation, everything that I have is on Jesus. And I want you to know today that Jesus is the answer for the world. But I am going to tell you this, that just as I talked about last week, prior to the coming of the Lord, I believe that there will be a latter rain outpouring of the Spirit And there will be one more clash with the values of lust and sin and the values of God's people and the values of life and the Spirit of God at work in the earth. 
I do believe in a last day outpouring of God and a revival among God's people, and I'm going to live to see it. How many of you want to see that today and see God at work? Some have said, well, pastor, I don't know. It might be like the last days where, or the last days in Egypt. Let me tell you something. Some of the plagues came upon Egypt, but there were lights on in the houses of the children of Israel, and they were worshiping their God, and they were thanking Him all the while. And you know why? Because the blood was applied to the doorpost. I've got the blood applied to my life today. I don't know if I'm going to finish this message today, but I want to give you some things today that will protect you against deception. Verses 13 through 16, you can look at this later. I may just give you a couple of these. Remember to whom you belong. Remember to whom you belong. The Bible says in around chapter 13 through 16, it says, but we ought always to thank God for you, brothers, loved by the Lord, because from the beginning God chose you to be saved through the sanctifying work of the Spirit and through belief in the truth. I wanted to let you know that verse says that God has chosen you. You are chosen by God. I belong to Jesus today. I am the apple of His eye. I am the head and not the tail. God has placed His Spirit within me. He chose me for His salvation. God says, I know you. You're my child. You're my child. You're my son. You're my daughter. I have chosen you. So even in the midst of what the enemy might do, the lies that you hear, the deceptive spirits of the age, you must know that you are accepted in the Beloved, and you're chosen by God, and He sets you free today, and it's worthy to be praised even in the midst of what you do not understand. So whatever happens, you stand firm. No, God, you chose me. You chose me. Secondly, remember to believe and hold on to the truth. This means you have to be proactive. Truth is not just going to come by osmosis. I'm thankful today our essentials class has 15 people in it. I hope one day we have 115. I believe God wants to bring. Listen, so if you want to have, you want to hold on, then you've got to set time for God every day. If you don't have a set time for God every day, you're cheating yourself. Have a set time for God every day. And you need to make sure you get in the Word of God. Go to church. Go to church? Well, Pastor, we're here. And there may be some that are listening to me today. Maybe you've only, you only come once every six months. Listen, the Bible says that we need to be together and encourage one another all the more as we see the day approaching. Oh, Pastor, well, we've been through COVID or whatever. COVID is, is gone. We, we may have some flare-ups or whatever, but the church, we need to come together. We are still here. We are not silent. And God's still going to use His church in these last days. I wish somebody would praise Him in this room. And then you got to be encouraged. How do we encourage one another? Like what I just said. we got to encourage and lift one another up. We're encouraged by the Lord. Verse 17, encourage your hearts and strengthen in every good deed and word. If God encourages you, you need to be encouraging somebody else. But I want to, I want to close with this. I want to tell you that the Bible says in 2 Thessalonians a little bit earlier, Paul had to tell them about the lawless one and that he would come and the second coming was not yet, but these things would happen. He had to tell them to warn them. But very early on, he tells them what's going to happen to the Antichrist. The Bible says that he has a destiny in chapter 2 and verse 8. And then the lawless one will be revealed whom the Lord Jesus will overthrow with the breath of His mouth and destroy by the splendor of His coming. I want to tell you something. The Bible says that with the spirit of His mouth, His breath, the Antichrist and the devil's forces will be defeated. 
One person said it's like blowing a dust particle off of your sleeve. We give the enemy too much credit. I want you to understand that my God is an awesome God and there's no force on earth and in hell that can compare to the greatness, the wonderful majesty, the power, the glory, the greatness of Almighty God and He will come and He will breathe in His breath and the enemy will be defeated. There will come a time of millennial reign and the enemy will be bound for a thousand years and the Lord will reign on His throne from Jerusalem. And the Lord will basically say this is the way that it should have been from the beginning and the lion will lie down with the lamb and and the child will play near the serpent's hole. God will take care of what's happening on planet earth. But in the meantime, you live for Jesus. In the meantime, you get in the Word. I don't care what happens in the heavenlies. I don't care what happens in the earth. I don't care what they say to you. You may be betrayed. You may stand by yourself. You may have all these things against you. But the Lord is here to say today, I told you about these things, but He says in the last part of the book of Revelation, Behold, I am coming soon. Even so, come Lord Jesus. I wish you would praise Him in this room today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This has been a different kind of message today. This is not the word of PT. I went right by 2 Thessalonians. Told you what's happening. But the Bible says when you see these things come to pass, lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. So I want you to stand with me today. You do that? <clears throat> I just really feel today the Holy Spirit wants me to deal with people that are on the fence. You know Jesus. You, you've heard of Jesus. You maybe even come to church. But, you've, but today, you really need to say, Lord, I'm all in. Lord, I'm all in. It's going to take that to be an overcomer. But you will overcome. So today, I just want to ask if if there's anyone in this room and you say, Pastor, I really need to be all in. I'm dealing with some stuff. I'm just going to call it like it is. Some of you are being pulled by some types of bondages that are in your life strung out on something else may not be an addictive substance could be pornography it could be that you're so addicted to your your computer you're addicted to your past you're addicted to all kinds of social media the Lord says today I give you this opportunity to yield to me. And so, I just want to ask this question. I'm not going to embarrass you. I promise you I will not embarrass you. But if you're in this room and you say, Hey, Pastor, that's me. I I really need today to make a complete, full dedication to serve God and be a person of the Word. Maybe you love Jesus. Maybe you've asked Him to be the Lord of your life, but you're, you're just living a mediocre life. You're, you're lukewarm. And today, you would like to say, Pastor, I, I really got to get tied in. I got to get tied in. I've heard what you've said, and I want to be tied in. And I want everything that Jesus has for me. If, if you're here, don't be ashamed. I want you just to lift your hand and say, Pray for me, Pastor. Pray for me. I really need this, Lord. I need to be fully and completely yours. Yes. There are several, several in this room today. God bless you. 
I think there's about five or six individuals in this room today. Right where you are, I want you just to say this. Say it with me. Let's all say it together. Lord Jesus, I give you everything. My life surrendered to you. You're my God. I have nothing but you. Wean me. Deliver me from things that are hindering me. I give it all to you today. And I accept your freedom. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 I want every head bowed. But if you lifted your head, would you just look? I lift your hand. Would you look at me? Do you believe what you prayed there, my brother? Yes, sir. Do you believe what you prayed back there? Amen. Do you believe this, my man? God bless you. Amen. 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 God's doing a great work. Amen. So I want to tell you, you've got to get in the Word like never before. I, I preached a little longer today, and, and I, but I had to get this out today. And I love you. But we're going to overcome today regardless of what happens. Amen. So let's give God praise. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. <clears throat> Hallelujah. If, if you're not in the essentials class and you lifted your hand, Pastor Tawana would love to have you. I'm going to overrule that you had to be there the first week or so. You need to get in a class where you're going to learn the basics of the faith. Amen. All right. You can see her after service if you need to do that. I want you to have an awesome day in the Lord because Jesus is Lord. He will be Lord, and we can worship Him in thanksgiving today. Amen and amen. God bless you. Have an awesome day in Jesus. Amen.